Good morning, fellow physicists. Welcome back to another video. Today, a cool little experiment that you can do at home with one or two nice consequences. So here's how the experiment goes. All you really need is a ruler in some kind of way, something to measure distance. You need an object, really doesn't matter <laughs> how big it is, and you also need a flashlight. It's an optics experiment. And what we want to do is we want to take a look at shadows and how they behave. I usually do this in sixth grade because this is where we do simple optics. But as mentioned before, it's a cool little problem and it helps them understand that there are different types of graphs out there in mathematics, especially ones that are not linear. Now, here's how it goes. The task is to basically put an object x centimeters away from a wall. It could be their, their I don't know, their pack of matches or anything. Then you are going to measure this very distance between the object and the wall in some kind of way. And what they are now going to do is, after also measuring how wide the object is, they are going to place their light source. And what they are going to notice is that it's going to project a shadow over here. Now what happens to the shadow if I get closer to the object? Obviously the shadow grows. If I go farther away, it becomes smaller and smaller. And what they need to do is they need to start with a distance of five centimeters from the object and then they are going to measure how wide the shadow is. Five more centimeters away, so 10 centimeters, measure once again how wide it is and so on. They need to go away up until 50 centimeters. And the last thing they have to do is draw a graph of the problem. That's basically about it. Let me take some measurements and then we are going to be back. Now that we have gathered our data, why not plot it into Excel? And what you're going to notice is that if we put everything into a graph and put a regression into here, even without a regression, you are going to notice that it looks kind of hyperbole. We have an asymptotic behavior. So why does it work like that? Why does the shadow behave like that? When you get closer, that the shadow becomes way bigger. When you get farther away, that it becomes smaller and smaller and that you even have an asymptote. Well, we can deal with all of this if we just take a look at a tiny little sketch of our experiment in and of itself. So what do we have? We have a certain object with a length O. What we also have is our light source somewhere down here. I'm going to place it right in the middle um, just for symmetry purposes. Now this is how our light behaves. Comes out in kind of a cone shape. And what we have over here is our shadow on the wall. Now this shadow on the wall has a certain width w. And also what we had to measure overall was on the one hand the distance between our um, object and the wall. So this right here was the distance one. Remember this right here is a constant. Also our object's width is also a constant. And also what we have here is the distance from the light source to the object. I'm going to call this d2. Now what are the variable things in our experiment? Well on the one hand the width of our shadow is going to change depending on how far away our um, light source is from the object. So we have a function w basically with respect to this distance d2 that we got right here. Now if you take a look at the sketch it becomes really apparent what's going on here. We are dealing with similar triangles. Now those similar triangles you can also make two triangles out of those but this really doesn't matter. Behave as follows. If we call this distance over here just d this is the total distance from the light source to our wall then how does the a similar triangle thing work? Well, we are going to compare the big triangle that we got right here with the smaller triangle. For simplification purposes, those are isosceles, but it really doesn't change anything about the fact you don't have to have them isosceles. The light point could also be here and wouldn't change anything about the argument. No matter that, what we are going to do is we are going to compare. Namely, we are going to compare the shorter side length in our sketch to the distances that we have drawn over here. Now how does the object's width 
compare to our distance d2, which is also, I'm going to call this x for simplification purposes, our variable of our function, well, o divided by x, so shorter divided by longer side, behaves the same as the shorter side w divided by the longer side d or the longer length. Okay, but we also know what d is. d is nothing other than x plus d1. So this right here is the same as um, o divided by x is w divided um, d1 plus x. And now we can solve for our w because this is a function with respect to x. Our w is hence nothing other than o divided by x times the 1 plus x. And now we can solve all of this. If we distribute everything into everything, we get O times D1 divided by X plus O times X divided by X. Now X and X is going to cancel out here, meaning what we are going to get overall is the function W, the width of our shadow, is with respect to the distance between our object and the light source. It's defined as O times D1 divided by X plus O. And this right here is a hyperbola. Obviously, it behaves proportionally to 1 over x. Now, what happens if the limit of the function goes to infinity, so x going to infinity? That means, what happens if our light source is farther and farther away from our object? Now, in the limit, as x approaches infinity, of w of x. Obviously, this term is going to go to zero, meaning we are going to get o overall. So meaning, what is the consequence that I was talking about before at the very start of the video? The farther we get away from the object, the more our shadow closes in on the actual size of the object or the width of the object. This is our asymptote that we had in our function. Looks like this. This right here is our asymptote exactly at the object's width. And that's basically about it. I think that this is kind of interesting. And it also makes sense by this high hyperbola um, that uh, basically our shadow gets bigger and bigger the closer our light source gets to our object. But I thought this is kind of a nice and interesting um, experiment and it's also a cool start into the topics of shadows in sixth grade. And also in sixth grade they learn that there are other things than just linear proportionally functions, for example. So this is kind of a cool introduction to the topic in optics and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, why not make sure to subscribe to the channel and also don't forget to become a patron if that's not um, much to ask of you to help keep the channel alive. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flamboyant day. See ya!